introduction to world theatre, let us now learn about the African theatre. Death and the King's Horseman by Wole Soenka. Colonization was perhaps the single most important factor that was directly responsible for many of the social and cultural impacts that shaped the early post-colonial African literature. The various colonial powers had carved out the continent of Africa into colonies and nations, carved out for trade purposes mostly on the basis of specific trade or colonial expeditions. This is crucial in understanding that most of the various post-colonial African nations are multinational states which are comprised of various ethnicities, tribes and traditions. It is also significant that colonization is only one of the key aspects that influenced African theatre. The acclaimed Kenyan author Nyugi Wa Thiong O oh states that, I quote, Drama has its origins in human struggles with nature and with others. There were rituals and ceremonies to celebrate and mark birth, circumcision, responsibility, marriages and the burial of the dead." Unquote. The origin of African theatre is deeply rooted in pre-colonial African drama, the various social performances, rituals, traditions and culture of the various African societies. It is important to see that African theatre cannot be divided strictly into traditional and modern styles as contemporary literary theatre exists along with rituals, festivals, popular indigenous theatre and various cultural performances and many a time one would encounter the latter within the former. Let us now look into the contribution of Wole Soenka. Akinwade Oluwole Babatunde Soenka is an acclaimed Nigerian playwright, poet and political activist. He is a member of the Yoruba people who predominantly speak Yoruba language. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1986 for his contributions to drama, novel and poetry. He is the first black African to receive this honour. His Nobel Prize citation describes him as one, I quote, who in a wide cultural perspective and with poetic overtones fashions the drama of existence, unquote. He uses satire as an effective tool while describing modern West Africa and his writings speak about the evils inherent in the exercise of power. He is a strong critic of military dictatorships and political tyrannies that crept up in the political landscape of post-colonial Africa. Most of his writings deal with the, I quote, oppressive boot and the irrelevance of the colour that wears it." Unquote. He was often targeted for his political views and during the Nigerian civil war, he was arrested by the military government and placed under solitary confinement for two years. Soenka's other important plays are A Dance of the Forests in 1963, The Line and the Jewel 1963, Madmen and Specialists, 1971, The Beatification of Area Boy, 1995. His famous novels are The Interpreters, 1965, and Season of Anomi, 1973. Sovinka also has a strong command of verse, and his notable poetry collections are Poems from Prison, 1969, Mandela's Earth and Other Poems, 1988 and Samarkand and other markets I have known 2002. Let us now move on to the influences in Soenka. Soenka acknowledges that his works have been strongly influenced by the works of Hubert Ogunde, Nigerian actor, playwright, theatre manager and musician. 
He founded the first professional theatrical company in Nigeria, the Ogunde Concert Party in 1945. He is widely regarded as the, I quote, father of Nigerian theatre, unquote, and, I quote, the father of contemporary Yoruba theatre, unquote. Some of his most famous plays include Tiger's Empire, Darkness and Light, and Mr. Devil's Money. Nigerian theatre as a whole has been undoubtedly influenced by the works of James N. Henshaw, whose works like This is Our Chance, Medicine for Love and Children of the Goddess which marked the beginnings for literary drama in Nigeria. Let us now analyse Soinka's play Death and the King's Horseman. Soinka's play Death and the King's Horseman is based on a true event that happened in the 1940s. Duro Ladipo, another Nigerian playwright, had already written a play based on the incident in the Yoruba language titled Oba Waja, which means the king is dead. Soenka wrote the play when he was a fellow at the Churchill College in Cambridge during his political exile from Nigeria. It was first premiered in New York in 1975. In his preface to the play, he warns the readers that while trying to understand the play, one should never consider it as a site for a, I quote, clash of cultures, unquote, calling such a reading as one of the greatest misconceptions that could occur. The play has five scenes and it is performed without interruptions. All the important productions of the play performed in America, principally in Chicago in 1976, New York in 1987, were directed by Soinka himself. The main characters are Ellison, the late King's Horseman, Simon Pilkings, a British district officer responsible for maintaining the British sense of law and order in the locality, Jane Pilkings, Simon's wife, Olunde, Ellison's eldest son who returns from pursuing medical studies in Britain, Ialoja, known as the mother of the market, the leader of the market women, and Sergeant Amusa, a member of the native police who works under Simon. The plot goes this way. Oruba custom dictates that when a Yoruba king dies, his horseman should commit ritual suicide. The horseman's spirit is crucial to the king's spirit ascending into the afterlife. The play begins when the king dies. The tradition and balance of the cosmos itself depends on the ritual suicide of horseman Ellison. If the ritual is not adhered to, the spirit of the king would be denied entry into afterlife and he would be forced to come back, wander the earth and wreak havoc on the Yoruba people. The first half of the play describes the process of the ritual in great detail. Ellison, a man who enjoys life's pleasures, is out celebrating his last day. When he enters a market to get ready for the rites, he prepares himself for the inevitable but the praise singer who accompanies him doubts Ellison's resolve to carry out his duty. However, Ellison at this point affirms that he is committed to do what is expected of him. The women folk at the market get him outfitted for the ceremony. But as he is a man who loves life on this side of the eternal divide, the task of preparing him for death as difficult for others as the carrying out of his duty complicated for the horseman himself. He requests Ialoja, the mother of the market, to make arrangements for him to marry a woman one last time on his last day. She obliges his request and as he was to commit a great sacrifice for the betterment of the whole universe. Meanwhile, Simon Pilkings and Jane are preparing for a masquerade party to be attended by the British prince himself. The local policeman Amusa alerts them of the imminent ritual suicide of Ellison. 
Simon's sensibilities stop him from not interfering in his matter. He asks Amusa to arrest Ellison to prevent him from undertaking the ritual. When Amusa attempts to arrest Ellison, he is chased away by the women of the market. The ritual starts and Ellison is drawn into a deep trance-like state. When the Pilkings receive word at the ball that the ritual will be carried out despite his orders, Simon sets out to intervene. Olunde, Ellison's eldest son, visits the Pelkinges then only to find Jane. It was the Pelkinges who urged him to go to medical school in England. His decision to leave has estranged him from his father. He has returned on hearing that the Yoruba king was no more and knowing that his father would have to commit ritual suicide. He had to fulfill his duties to both his father and his community in these circumstances. When he hears the ceremonial drums, he assumes that the ritual is done and that his father is dead. Olunde later finds out that his father survived as Simon and his force had intervened to stop the ceremony and had arrested Ellison. He becomes furious, blaming his father for his lack of commitment towards his duties. Olunde is convinced that if he had wanted to, Ellison could have completed the rite before the British forces stopped him. The community now blames Ellison for his failure to fulfill his duties to the king as much as the British force who interrupted the ceremony. Later, Ialoja visits Ellison in prison and taunts him for his lack of will and resolve to carry out his duty. Ellison admits to her that when the British force disrupted the ceremony, he did lack the will to go through with the ceremony. He also tells her that if not for the disruption, he was confident that he was going to be ready and confident to carry out the rites. Ialoja warns him that since his attempt to carry out the rite was unsuccessful, someone else has to step in and take his place to finish the ceremony in order to prevent cosmic chaos and restore balance. It is later revealed that Olunde takes it upon himself to restore the honour of his family, taking his father's place at the ritual to pay for his father's failure in completing his spiritual duties as the king's horseman. When Ellison finds out that Olunde is dead, he kills himself out of grief. However, the two deaths appear wasted as suggested later by a native who says that Ellison's death came late and may not have been sufficient to restore order at that point and that the universe itself may be spinning out of control. Let us now look into the main themes in the play. The first one is life cycle. The Yoruba people's culture and life revolves around the belief that life is a continuum. In Yoruba cosmology, life and afterlife are inextricably bound together by spiritual connection that needs to be maintained by rituals. The dead are never forgotten but honoured. The not yet born are also cherished as they may be ancestors returning to the physical world. The moments of transition from life to afterlife are spiritually important as they decide the cycle of life. Ellison's ritual suicide is important for the entire community as it is vital for the overall well-being of the community and the whole life cycle of the cosmos. A person who is about to make a ritualistic transition from life to afterlife is given special powers, privileges and rights. Ellison is even given the right to marry a new bride on his last day just before the ritual. I quote, the claims of one whose foot is on the threshold of their abode 
surpasses even the claims of blood." Unquote. So, death seldom is the need, but the beginning of unforeseen privileges. When Olunde dies to restore the balance of the world and his family's honor, the ensuing chaos sends Ellison on a path of grief and death. Ellison's new bride walks into the cell to see her dead husband and shuts his eyes in the ritualistic manner. Iyaloja tells her that, I quote, Now forget the dead, forget the living, turn your mind only to the unborn, unquote. The second theme is clash of cultures. This reading, though not desired by the playwright, is inevitable. The viewers who are not familiar with the Yoruba culture would invariably be drawn to the focus on the, I quote, clash of cultures, unquote, that they encounter between the cultures of the Yorubas and the British. Both cultures coexist in the same geographical space, but remain far apart, bewilderingly alien to each other. The British does not understand the native culture or native beliefs. They interfere with Ellison's ritual to stop it because they wish to guide the native to civilization. The orientalist mission of the British is satirized by Soenka. Soenka asserts that this kind of a reading mistakenly, I quote, presupposes a potential equality in every given situation of the alien culture and the indigenous on the actual soil of the latter." Unquote. The next theme is obviously duty. Ellison and Pilkings give us two varying perspectives on obligation which they both are bound by. Ellison's obligation is to play out his role in the sacred custom that he, as the king's horseman, was expected to do. It means only his death during the ritual could save his skin and community. Pilking's obligation is to implement the laws of the English Empire in Africa, which implies not permitting the probably primitive and barbaric traditions like the ritual suicide of the king's horseman to proceed. He trusts he is accomplishing something positive by disrupting the custom. He is saving the life of one man, Ellison, and not permitting the natives to stay primitive and uncivilized. The obligations of both men clash forcefully with each other and this confrontation triggers the tragedies in the last act of the play. We also have an another very very interesting theme which is the Yoruba proverbs. The play also features a wide range of Yoruba proverbs to invoke a strong Yoruba sentiment to the audience. For example, when Ellison decides to take a new bride before the ritual, his accompanying praise singer gets annoyed with him and tries to dissuade him by saying, I quote, because the man approaches a brand new bride, he forgets the long faithful mother of his children, unquote. Ialoja reprimands Ellison for his love for earthly pleasures and reminds him of his duty that is essential for the well-being of the whole community by saying, I quote, eating the Awusa nut is not so difficult as drinking water afterwards, unquote. Now, let us summarize the session. Vole Soenka's Death and the King's Horseman is perhaps the Nobel Prize winning playwright's greatest and most enduring work. Ellison was a man who loved to live, but is forced to face a ritual death because of his social hereditary role of being the king's horseman. He understands the significance of his self-sacrifice in their culture and is ready to face inevitable death for the general well-being of his community. Simon Pelkings takes it upon as his duty to save Ellison from his fate and to civilize the community. 
Olunde feels ashamed at his father's perceived lack of will and takes it upon himself to restore the family's honor, bringing further tragedy in its wake. We have discussed the plot and the main themes of the play in order to get a better understanding while reading it, trying to place it within the colonial context and a humanized subtext. Let us now move into the assignment questions. Analyze Wole Soinka's play, Death and the King's Horseman as a post-colonial play. How does Soinka bring out the theme of life cycle in the play? Thank you. I am sure by this time you would have understood how Wole Soenka has made an impact in Nigerian literature and theatre. His influence is magnanimous and as one of the writers has said, he remains the most unsurpassed playwright ever. For references, you could refer to critical perspectives on Wole Soenka written by James Gibbs, Three Continent Press, Washington. You could also refer Understanding Wole Soenka, Death and the King's Horseman by Dasilwa A.O., Sam Bookman Publication, Indiana University.